Hello friends, in this video we'll be looking at steps needed to localize an ASP.NET application. To summarize, localization is the process of adapting an application to a regional demographic. Before we get started, we'll need a copy of JetBrains Rider, .NET Core 3.1 or higher, and the sample project, which is accessible via the visible QR code on the right. It also doesn't hurt to be fluent in multiple languages. Here is the sample application running in our browser. The application has a culture picker in the upper right hand corner. As we change the language from English to German to Japanese, we can see the text on the page adapt to the selected culture. Like most ASP.NET applications, we'll begin in the startup file. To use localization, we first need to register our services. The add localization method registers an iString localizer factory and an instance of iString localizer. These interfaces will allow us to access our resource values programmatically. This is also where we set the path to our resource files. Next, we can configure request localization options using the configure method. Here we can set the default culture to the United States. We can also support German and Japanese. We also set falling back to true to allow subcultures to use parent cultures. Finally, we remove a request culture provider that looks at the request's header. We do this to stop the browser from overriding our UI culture picker. Normally, there are three request culture providers. Query string request culture provider, cookie request culture provider, and accept language header request culture provider. For Razor Pages, we need to call add view localization, which registers more iString localizer implementations, iHTML localizer and iView localizer. We'll see these being used later. That said, they are not required, but do come with some benefits. Finally, I've written a custom request localization cookies middleware, which looks at the iRequest culture feature and writes a cookie to the response. This allows us to carry over our cultural preference between web requests. Feel free to use and adapt this in your own projects. Things get a little easier in the configure method, where we register the request localization middleware along with our custom request localization cookies middleware. These two middleware should be registered before any other element that requires localization features, such as Razor Pages or MVC. Let's talk about resource files. If you've worked with any localization in the past, then these files should be familiar to you. We can use Writer's Localization Manager to see all of our current cultures and manage each resource value with this intuitive user interface. Multiple resource files aren't necessary, but separating values based on naming convention can make managing resources much simpler. When we look at the view that utilizes these files, we'll see some naming conventions are more important than others. We can see at the top of the page that we inject an iString localizer, iHTML localizer, and an iView localizer. This is for demonstration purposes, and most folks should pick one, preferably iView localizer. Both iString localizer and iHTML localizer take a type argument. The namespace of the type is what matches with our resource path to build a convention name for our resource file. In this case, we are looking for the indexmodel.resx file found under resources forward slash pages. iView localizer uses the view's name and file path to determine the resource file. Since this is the index view, the path is resources forward slash pages forward slash index.resx. Both indexmodel.resx and index.resx have culture-specific variants for German and Japanese. The localizer interface uses the indexer approach. This is primarily to support incremental localization. As developers, we can index into the iString localizer interface and either return a match or the index string itself. This allows us to continue development while worrying about implementing specific cultures later. In the middle of our view, we can see an ASP.NET form. This too utilizes localization. 
Stepping into our index model, we can see the data annotation attributes that decorate our class. It's a little verbose, but we can configure the display attribute by setting the resource type. The name is the value used to look up a resource value. The required attribute sets the resource name and the resource type. Running our application shows we've successfully set up the components necessary for localization. I hope you enjoyed this video, and remember that this sample is available at the repository found at the beginning of this video.